What is up, everybody? This is Byron Kingsley. Let's discuss on how an adaptation of Nim would be like for a new generation. But first, a little history. Way back in 2009, Paramount was working with director Neil Berger on a remake of The Secret of Nim, but nothing has materialized ever since. Cut to 2015. MGM reacquired the rights of Nim to produce a new film based on the original novel by Robert C. O'Brien. The film is to be produced by the team of Daniel Bobker and Aaron Kruger, with screenplay by Ice Age series writer Michael Berg. It is said to be James Madigan's directorial debut. It is planned as a CGI slash live action movie in the style of other classics like the Smurfs and Alvin the Chipmunks. Fucking sarcasm, by the way, as both suck shit through a septic tank, and will be an origin story in which an imperial mouse protagonist befriends a comical crew of lab rats as they turn hyper intelligent. They escape a secret laboratory and became the great minds of vermin civilization, forced to outwit the humans hot on their tails. The studio plans to turn the novel into a family franchise. Later on, the Russo brothers, those two MCU directors who jerk hardcore Marvel fans off with Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, were announced to be executive producers of the remake as of April 2019. And now recently, even Fox threw his gloves into the ring as they play to adapt the books as an event series. Well, how about a better idea? Why not have Netflix make it into an animated miniseries? They already did that to the recent adaptation of Warship Down, however, there's just a catch. It should be faithful to the source material instead of remaking it shot for shot, which means fantasy elements has to be omitted, especially the deus ex machina which was used in the climax. So here's how an adaptation should be like. Spoilers if you either haven't seen the original or read the book. Okay, for starters. Given that the novel was published in 1971 and the original animated movie released in 1982, I think this new adaptation should be a period piece. However, it will be appealing to the fans of the original if the miniseries is set in early spring 1982. For the first scene, we see the rats recently steal a spare extension cord for the electricity in the rosebush, before we see Nicodemus writing his journal entry discussing about the death of Jonathan Frisbee and his affiliation with the escaped rats. And then our plot finally begins with the main character, Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee. So, for the changes, even though this adaptation follows the original book, there are a few exceptions. Instead of Nicodemus becoming very young like in the book, he should be middle-aged and has a custom eye patch. Jenner, which became the villain in the movie, had to be trimmed down into appearing in a few scenes. Aside from appearing in flashbacks, during the meeting scene, he was adamant on the rat's plan and decides to leave the colony with his own group of rats. Later on, when Frisbee was caged, Fitzgibbon read a newspaper article explaining a couple of rats who were electrocuted in a store while trying to steal a motor. It is implied that Jenner was one of the rats. Three characters from the novel who doesn't make an appearance in the 1982 film had to be included in this adaptation. Now, for the voice acting, it's probably the most difficult part. So, for the main character, she should be voiced by Brie Larson, best known for starring in Kong Skull Island, Trainwreck, and was Carol Danvers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For Mr. Ages, he should be voiced by Toby Jones, who was known for starring as Dobby, the house elf, in the Harry Potter movies, Arnim Zola in the MCU, Mr. Eversol in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Alfred Hitchcock in the... HBO television film The Girl in 2012, and he is set to star in the fifth Indiana Jones movie directed by James Mangold. For Jeremy, he should be voiced by either Matt Smith or David Tennant, both doctors from BBC's Doctor Who. The latter previously voiced Scrooge McDuck in the DuckTales reboot. For the role of the Shrew, which the new adaptation should rename her Lady Shrew and is a neighbor instead of an aunt to the Frisbees, she should be voiced by Charlotte Rampling, recently known for starring in the 2021 adaptation of Dune as the Reverend Mother. For Justin, he should be voiced by Linus Roach, known for starring in Batman Begins and the 2012 series Titanic by Julian Fellows, creator of Downton Abbey. For the Frisbee children, Teresa would be voiced by McKenna Grace and Martin, 
voiced by Finn Wolfhard. For the remaining two, regardless of which actors would voice them, I think they should be voiced by recent childhood actors. Let me know who would voice Timothy and Cynthia in the comments below. Voice them. For Nicodemus, he should be voiced by Jared Harris. He was Professor Moriarty in Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, and King George VI in The Crown. However, he will forever be known for portraying Valerie Legasov in the HBO miniseries Chernobyl, which he was nominated at the Golden Globes for Best Actor in Miniseries, but won both a Satellite Award and a British BAFTA Award. On to the next one. For the Great Owl, who tells Frisbee about the rats in the rosebush, he should be voiced by Tony motherfucking Todd. He was in Candyman, he was the creepy mortician in the Final Destination series, he was the voice of the Fallen in the second Transformers movie, and he's set to voice Venom in the upcoming Spider-Man game for the PS5. Just visualize the Candyman himself voicing an owl. Holy shit, how badass it would be if it really happened. Now for the music, it should be composed by either Alexander Desplat or Howard Shore. For the end credits, just for the fans, Flying Dreams should be included. That's pretty much it. What do you think of my predictions for a future adaptation? Let me know in the comment section below. Until the next video, like, comment, subscribe. This is Byron Kingsley, and I'll see you next time. Bye.